as four, she said, I'm not very good with buttons. But we will get there, amen? amen. I love you very much. As Pastor said, uh, the, you know the thing that I enjoy coming here about is that the atmosphere that I get around when I get around Pastor John and Karen is that it can be three or four days before I get here, and there is such a seeing atmosphere here. And I've learned just being here a lot of things that we're dealing with. And Pastor and I, you know, he'll call me or I'll call him, whatever. And I just, when I can start hearing, we, we have tracked for 30 years together. It's been about, it's a long time. I can't remember now. It's been probably at least 25. Yeah, at least. Because uh, I remember you were small. <laughs> Enough to no good, you know. No. But, uh. <laughs> We would, we, we've always paralleled spiritually. Hey, that's all right. I love you. You know it. Hey, we've all gone through seasons. Amen? But uh, we've always paralleled together about what's happening or just what we sense. And, uh, you know, as you, you know, there are just fullness of times as pastor refers to them, and I know he's taught on that here, uh, about your life and I don't know what it is other than just God's God's timing is his sovereignty that's one thing we define with him is sovereignty his time belongs to him for your life and so you know you can either I'd rather be as my pastor taught me I'd rather I'd rather you be a little bit behind God than ahead of God because grace can catch you up real quick but he said I'd rather you lag a little bit and still be aggressive and get out ahead of God seeing what he may want you to do but you helping him work it out because things just don't come out good sometimes when you help him work it out and so with that you know you come into and, and, and I don't understand this other than what I've noticed and I've just looked at church history uh, you know uh, about what I've seen and my, some of my spiritual fathers that I had the privilege of being around, but from Brother Summerall to T.L. Osborne, just men like that from the history past. Uh, my pastor, Happy Caldwell, and I've had the privilege of being around Kenneth Hagin, and, uh, but more like Brother Copeland and ha being in an atmosphere to where, I mean, being around him, being a very small group of ministers and getting to spend a full day with him, just him pouring into us. And having that impartation, being in that environment, and hearing how him and, and uh, Sister Gloria did it. You know, just atmosphere like that. Other, other ministers, other groups are, are affiliations. And, you know, they've all, you know, there's just, there's common core values in each one of them that you can string the same. There's a book called uh, Good to Great by Jim Collins. You need to read that book. It's, it's about corporations and how from 1986 to 2001, he did a study of CEOs of, of, of American corporations that soared or, or did well on the stock market. They did well in their profit and their business schemes, and he found very core values in each one of them that were the same. Well, you can see this in spiritual leaders as well. And so when you kind of get around that and you start seeing uh, the everyday of God, uh, how God, you know, last year I was probably, Probably the second greatest battle I've ever gone through in my spiritual life. I was going through last year when I came here. And Pastor hooked up with me. It wouldn't, I mean, he sends, it's not me laying my heads on your head and getting it done. That might help, but it's really something you've got to walk through. I had to walk through this storm. You know, and when you get in a situation like that, and it weighs on you and, and just pulls at you and pulls at you and pulls at you. Right? Yes. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it requires you to grow within. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and, and the storm was about my destiny. It was about what it was trying to deter Lee and I from stepping into some things that we're seeing now. I'm talking about building a network, a Latin-speaking network, like God TV, that God can show currently what he's doing in the earth. You understand? And we're on, the, we're on the beginnings of beginnings of beginnings of that. I'm thinking, how in the heaven are we, you know, my mind will think that. But I lay down, I've seen it so much that I just lay reason down so quick because there's no way to get there on your own. You understand?
but enough in your spiritual britches or several other people's spiritual britches to pull that off. But it's like faith. That's all I need is to believe. He will fulfill. I know that's so strong in me now because we've had to walk out so much over the years. Right? So that principle is established. Hey, we'll just trust you. And we'll obey as you direct us. So right now we're fulfilling a design of a studio in Monterey. We're in the process of putting that into play. And we got about done there. And so, you know what I mean? It'll be step by step. Well, I want to talk to you today. And there was an atmosphere. Last night I woke Pastor John, you know how he does. I got, I got that. We went to this restaurant. Yeah, they got a lot of bread. And I, I, I usually get, I get a little sinful in that area, you know. <laughs> Especially when you got the butter, you know, and it's flowing. And uh, so I, I came back. And I came back to the room. And I was a little, and Lee called me. And she said, I love you night, whatever, because it's two hours, you know, later there. And, so we're talking real quick, and I was watching Fox uh, 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 reports on what happened to those people in England. You know what I mean? I think there was several killed. I can't remember now all the numbers. Seven, I think, whatever, but it doesn't matter. What I'm saying is, is it matters to them, yeah, but you know what I mean? I was praying for those people, and I was praying, God, you know, uh, uh, having some understanding from my brother-in-law, who's special forces, U.S. military, he's, he's fluent Arabic. He understands that culture very well, and he's explained things to me, why Europe has its issues and stuff like that and I was thinking and I was praying God there needs to be a policy change for those people you know I was praying those type things over those that government last night and that some uh, uh, that female lady uh, may her she's a British Prime Minister now that she would have the same gumption Margaret Thatcher had to take on the establishment and say this is what's right and this is what's wrong God give her courage to deal with whatever this issue is and so I was praying that way last night, and uh, your heart will change. You'll realize that God can use a prayer f- from a hotel room in Madera, California, can begin to work in that, those people's behalf, even if they don't even know better. Amen. You understand? We have the gospel. We have the King James Version in English because of that nation. A king took it on in his own right. King, can't remember which one it was, but it's one of them. My Bible history is pretty neat. But see... You begin to intercede, but you, you understand you got that authority, right? God, I pray for them folks, man. Every one of them that got wiped out yesterday, you know, and, and you, know, the, what, you know, my brain was thinking like that. So there's nothing real spiritual, but I woke up and you were in my heart. And I started walking that hotel about 1230. And all of a sudden, the Lord said to me, he said, I've got, I've got a real plan to get some folks into a place where there's no more restraints. Now, when Pastor Mike said that, he, that mantle coming down, that was the same thing. It wasn't just about healing of the body, which is a big deal. But it's, uh, it's also about healing. In other words, it's, just, it's getting you to a place that you can have faith to receive. And that's where, that's where I was last year when I came here. And really, you know, Pastor John, we were sitting in the living room watching a baseball. One of those, I don't know who it was, one of the teams, I think San Francisco Giants, we were watching baseball. And just kind of talking, whatever. And your old buddy from school came over that runs the homeless thing or whatever you call it, food bank, I think you call it. Nothing spiritual, but he looked me right in the face after everybody pulled out. And it's like, you know what? I'm in agreement. You're getting through this storm. And God's, God's going to get you in a position that you can fully receive and walk out what he's asking you to do. Because this storm's about you. It's about your identity. It's about taking from you. And I'm telling you, it... it it's the second biggest bell. I, I, there's only one other that was bigger than that I remember. But see, it was after some things. And praise God, we got through it. Amen. And it wasn't in a day, week, or a month. If there's a way around it. I don't know. I just told Pastor last night, I'm just not spiritual enough or something. You know, I just don't, you know. But what happens is, go, turn in your, go to John chapter 6, verse 6, and I want to show you something. Because God's ready to take some restraints off some folks here. And, and, when, and when Pastor Mike laid hands on you and, and started praying, you know, that anointing was here. There was a real piece of joy this morning to begin to do that. Because you've got to remember this, the essential things that make it work for you. When you talk about faith for, uh, to receive, it's what's happening in you. It's not God's part. It's your part with God. Because God's got it ready. 
But a lot of times, it's our, the condition of our heart, because faith is out of the heart. Right. Am I right or am I wrong? Right. Yes. And so, it, it's what he can do with you. And I just had to walk through some things that had to change in me last, in this last year, and part of this year. There was just some things that I really had to come to grips with. And it wasn't that it was real sinful. But it was like this. It's what God just put his finger on and said, I need to adjust this through you, or I need you to adjust this, what I'm revealing to you. So it doesn't mean it's, you know, you know, I'm, you know I, don't, I don't drink and smoke and chew and run with those who do. You know, I mean, that's what I heard growing up. That was basically the, the Pentecostal mindset of being right with God. Are you listening? You know, it was based on do's and don'ts and not, and not so much what happens on the inside. Because our covenant is within. You operate from here. You are a spirit being if you're born again. And there has to be spiritual realities in you just like there are natural realities. And you know there, there, there are laws, there are spiritual laws of restraint. I mean, if, we, if I gun down this avenue out here, which I forgot what it is, and heading toward the hotel, and I hit 65 miles an hour, one of Madeira's finest is going to be behind me pretty quick, and, I, and I'm going to see the bubble blues, you know what I mean, and I've got a problem on my hands. And so, you know, I mean, that, it's the same way spiritually. There are certain things you can do to stop God's release. And this scripture right here, when I got intrigued with this right here, John 6, 6, yeah, there it is, he said this. He said this to stretch Philip's faith. He already knew what he was going to do. That word right there, he already knew what he was going to do, got in me. In other words, Jesus operated by the Holy Spirit. He was not the Son of God. He was the Son of Man. He was the Son of God in that he was deity. You understand sin here to be a sacrifice, but he had to operate as the Son of Man. He had to operate through the Holy Spirit. Now, he did have the spirit without restraint or without measure, of course. But you understand, he had to hear to do. Now, since you got all this going back there, pull up Luke chapter 2, verse 52, and I'll show you this. Because what happened with me was he knew what he was about to do, and we'll come back to this in just a minute. Man, this got in me. Luke chapter 2, verse 52. 52, yep, and Jesus matured. Now look at that. Growing up in both body and spirit, blessed by both God and people. Now, I want you to listen to this out of the Amplified. Let me get my seers here and listen to this in the Amplified. And uh, see, sometimes you can have tradition that blinds your eyes. And even though we know he became the son of God, there was just some things in me. But when this scripture came alive in me, listen to this. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in broad, full, in broad, in broad and full understanding and in stature and years and in favor with God and man. So he had to grow spiritually. He had to grow in favor with God and man. There was, an, there was growth in him. There was increase. In other words, there, there was means of exchange. There was a download from heaven to, into his heart on earth. For him to be the person that he needed to be to pull off, go back to John chapter 6, verse 6. And this is what I saw. Gary, what's in you determines what you get. In other words, it's not about me, it's about you. Yeah. Right? So there has to be a place that you increase or grow in wisdom and stature. Yeah. Am I right or am I wrong? Yeah. I mean, like Karen said, you know, I, I'm having to be concerned about the joints now. Because when I do long runs now, my right knee starts trying to hey, hurt. And I'm thinking, I told Lee the other day, I said, aggravates the do out of me. And, and, but the last two years, I, my, something has shifted in my body. I'm being straight as I know how to be. He, he, that's, what he, that's what he harasses me with right there. Well, I had to change the way I went to the trainer guy, and I said, man, I just can't haul off and just poof anymore. And he goes, how old are you? And I said, fix me, I was 55, fix me 56. And he goes, dude, take a break. You, need a, you don't need long pounding out runs on your, you know, you can do a mile or so, but you can't, you don't need to do this. Well, I got into CrossFit. And I love it. 
but they teach you how to make your heart work in a lot of cardio without a lot of, you know, without a lot of joint strength. It's about resistance. It's about core training. There's a lot of things. And, and, and so what becomes important, he said, hey, dude, it's not about, you know, uh, it's about learning. Hey, you got, you got to, you got to remember, there's going to be certain parts of your body that are going to, as age creeps in, that's going to try to wane. And you need, you need to re-wane them. You understand? In other words, you need to understand what's going to happen with age. It's not just about doing exercise. You need to understand what's going to happen with your age. Huh? Yeah. Now, your, your brain will say, no way, Jack. Huh? Right. Am I right or am I wrong? So I got, how many of those ever got? Have you ever dealt with pride before? Any of you ever done that? <laughs> Well, I was ministering in San Antonio in January, and I got in a run and gun basketball with a bunch of kids. Now, I had the cardio to stay with them. I just didn't have the quickness. And I started penetrating that middle. I was stupid, just stupid is, the stupid does, you know, fourth. And I went down the middle of that thing, and I faked this kid. Well, he was so quick, black kid, man. And I just tried driving. Well, I ate his elbow, his show, you know what I mean? He just turned around, and boy, and he planted one on me, and he drove it right into my chest. Well, my body went... Because he outweighed me about 40, 50 pounds. And uh, after that game, I went to sleep that night, got up the next morning, and something wasn't right. <laughs> I mean, I shifted. It's like my whole core shifted or something. And I'm thinking, what is wrong with me? And I mean, for about three to five days, I hurt. Yeah. Well, I thought, boy, I better not tell Lee. She's going to be mad at me for getting in that game. But finally, she said, are you okay? And I said, yeah. And she said, don't lie to me. And I said, well, baby, I took a shot. She said, what do you mean you took a shot? I said, well, I got in a running gun game. And I said, I, I went in to drive. And I said, this kid planted one on me. And I said, baby, it hurt. <laughs> well, she said, what's our agreement? You agreed you wouldn't do that anymore because if you get hurt. Well, I ain't going to get hurt, baby. Listen to me. <laughs> you, you think you are, but you ain't. Are you listening? You know what I'm talking about. Because we see our friends end up six months on a, you know, surgery or something. Now listen to me, listen to me. I said, okay, you're right. She said, promise me, give me your word. You won't do that again. Well, man, I'm telling you. Well, see, you, you, you begin to learn naturally by what goes on. In you. Am I right? It's the same way spiritually. You get that sensitive on the inside. Your spirit realm is more real, actually, in this realm. Yeah. And you have senses. You have spiritual senses. It's like natural. I hurt. I went, oh. I mean, I, I, mean, I took a blow, and it was like he rearranged my, frame, rearranged my frame or something. And I told, I thought, oh, Lord. And I woke up one night, and I fell asleep on my left side, and I guess I'd leaned over whatever, and I got up, and I couldn't hardly move that second morning. And I'm thinking, oh, you know what I mean? It was that kind of pain. It was when I got up to get up. And I'm thinking, ah! Oh. You know, and, and, and it's like, I felt guilty because I knew I wasn't supposed to do it, that I, you know, Father, by your stripes, I'm healed. I wouldn't even do that. But how many, can, you know, laugh about How many been there, though? And I was like, God. I just told him, I said, you got to help me. Thank God for chiropractors. Then go, and he, they can pop you back into place. And I'm thinking, it's like, well, what'd you do? Well, don't do that. You don't need to get in the, you know, it's okay to run past the ball, but you don't need to try to hit, shoot the middle. You know, you're, that's, that's not a wise thing for you to do. How old are you? <laughs> Shut up. I don't want you to. <laughs> but see, what happens is you realize natural things by natural effects, right? Well, that spiritual growth or spiritual change is the same way. You got spiritual senses about yes, you. Sir. Yes, sir. And you can know what's going on in you. You can know your own heart. Yes. Now, that verse there, he said, and he knew what he was about to do. That Greek word is the Greek word E-I-D-O. It's a present past. It means this. Information in the past you utilize in the present. Now, I, my Greek is real good, but it's what I get off software because I can read, right? <laughs> and 
I've got a friend of mine who's a doctor, got a doctorate in, in, from Harvard in Hebrew or, or in Greek, and so I can call him, hey, what's this mean? And then, hey, okay, so I'll explain it real simple so you can understand it for us. So, but I realized that there was something going on in Jesus at this point when he fed the 5,000. That's what he did here. For he, for he himself knew what he would do. And when I saw that, that put something in me. He said, Gary, you can know that you know. Yeah. Now go to John chapter 13, verse 6 and verse 7. I'm off my notes now, but I just, I've just got something stirring in me. I'm going to go this direction. Give me an example. We've shifted seasons. Pastor talked about shifting season. Yes. Yes. I had a board meeting. With a, we go to New Orleans every year. We've been, we're in our ninth year. We had about 70, what did I tell you, 65 to 70 on our team this year, something like that, going down there. It's one week team. I take church, different churches around the country, and mostly from the Midwest and not my part of the country because it's easier for them to get there. And we go in for a week, and we minister in the inner city. We saw last year 39 salvations. We saw some tremendous healing. I've got, I've got actual miracles on video. We dig into that ninth ward down there where Katrina just knocked the snot out of it. And we get in there and just, we go for change. We go for spiritual atmosphere. We've been in the schools. We've done all kinds of inner city projects. We've done, we've painted gang members, their aunties houses, as they said, or whatever. We've done things to make change. Amen. And this year, all of a sudden, my leadership team, that go, everybody's volunteered that goes with me. Everybody takes a week. And we get in there. All of a sudden, things just started happening. It didn't work for them to come. Well, I can't do it without them. I mean, two or three people can do it. It takes a whole group of people committed that understand what's going on down there. You've got to understand the atmosphere. You know, we've got, if, something, if there's ever like an outbreak of gang and stuff, we've got, we've got our own 911 system that gets people into place, safe place with you as a team member. We have to really think that way. And so I didn't have anybody. Well, Lee knew all the time we were done down there. But she never said a word to me because she said, I know how you are. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But she said, that don't mean we won't go back because I, lo I love what we do there. Oh, you don't see the miracles we see. I mean, you don't see the gang members say, hey, nobody will touch you. Words out. They love us there. New Orleans Vice tried running us out. Their Vice squad showed up and says, you know where you are with all these kids? And we go, New Orleans. They said, you know where you are in New Orleans? Yeah. Y'all don't need to be here. Well, it's free country. We can be where we want to be. They, can't, they couldn't make us leave because we know your chief of police, by the way. He's a friend of our host here. They're personal friends. So, you know, you, you understand. He's a good deacon in the Baptist church. And nobody's, go you understand. So nobody will mess with you, right? Now listen to this. But all of a sudden, something just wasn't right. I'm thinking, devil, I bind you in Jesus' name. I bind you. Now, listen to this. But two of my board members for down there called me. It's a, he's a football coach in Texas, very successful. Uh, his wife's a, a secretary to a very large ministry, very known, well-known, in, in certain person. And, but they go with me every year, and we're just very close. And uh, they called me about 11 o'clock at night and said, Gary, we just got to talk to you. Huh? We can't come. There's too much on the table right now. We're just something in our da da da. They're dealing with da 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 da. I said okay, and I'm going because they're very core people. And all of a sudden, she said, and, and she pipes up. Can can we be honest? Well, that's what you're all about. She said, we don't feel like you're supposed to do this anymore. Huh? Now, I've been feeling that for months. Yeah. But because of just my who to do, we're going to do it no matter what. Yeah. That's why Lee said to me, baby, that's why unless I know heaven says to me, she said, I don't see anything to you. Unless I know God tells me to tell you. Because right. she said, I know this is something you got to get. But she said, I knew when we left there, we wouldn't be back. That doesn't mean we won't go back. I'm never, I'll never tell you that. I don't know that. But when I was sitting there talking to them, 
I know their hearts and I know their integrity. And I know their spiritual nature. And while she's talking to me, and she, she, all of a sudden I heard this words, don't go back. Next day I shut down the team. I almost puked when I realized we wouldn't go. I puked, almost puked. Something inside. But, you know, I, I talked to Lee later, and I said, you think that was spirit? No, she said, that's your flesh. She said, in other words, you've got such a soul tie there. See what I'm saying? Yeah. I almost puked. I started crying. I thought, God. And then I got mad. <laughs> Don't look so spiritual to me. <laughs> And then I get like Yosemite, I want to be like Yosemite Sam. Remember on Bugs Money, blitten, blatten, blitten, blatten. That's my attitude comes. And that's why I call Lee a lot of times. Because she helps me, she role plays with me, she talks to me. She helps me understand things. Like Forrest used to say about Mama, Mama just has a way of helping me understand what things, you know. Lee just has a way of reasoning. She knows me so well, and we've been there, we've been married almost 32 years now. You know what I mean? She knows how I think. And, I'll just, and I can talk to her say, babe, I got this, got that. And, she, and she'll reason with me. She'll have such wisdom sometimes. And so when I realized that, and this is what he said. He said, you remember when I talked to you back last April about the sh shift of season? Uh-huh. He said it meant that too. Yep. And Lee goes, baby, I could have told you we weren't going back. But I know you. I was like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Baby. And she said, it doesn't mean you're bad. You can't look at this as, per you know. I said, did we miss something that we, you no, know, no, 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 no. How many people have told you that you've done more down there and y'all seen more? Nobody sees signs and wonders. You know, everybody does good works. And I said, I don't know. And she, and, and she took me back, and she, and she reasoned. And she said to me, and she said, you didn't do nothing wrong. Because that was the first stupid thought that started coming. And that makes you want to grab it and just go back at it so hard and so fast. I mean, in a fury. It does me. It makes me angry. And it just whew, sends me through the roof. Well, see, now you got spiritual pride involved, you got flesh involved, yeah. and you got reason involved trying to figure out what God said. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. And you got you to gotta act right. You know, we had two gang guys last year, or yeah, last year, we had the tent up, and they were doing a, they got mad at each other over a drug deal around my tent with our team members. And they said, I'll fight. Right there, bias. Well, I mean, it, I was in the, I made me so angry, I grabbed both of them, just went at them. Of course, it, everybody's saying the pastor was going, Kikomo uh, Shah, you, you know, you need to be careful. Well, I didn't think about being careful because I've got about 50, 60 kids around. And I thought, God, you know, I know the hearts, I know the lies, I know, you know, I mean, we got to see this atmosphere change there. It's not just about, it's, it's got a shift in that city. Yeah. We took that thing on. We'd intercede for hours and fast and pray. I mean, we'd pull people in intercessory prayer together. Take that thing on. Go back at it. But see, that fear came is something you did. Here comes condemnation. And, 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 and that's what I went to Lee. I, and she said, you feel like you screwed up? And I said, yeah. I said, you ever see when it goes from a screw-up to an F-up? She goes, yeah. I said, that's the way I feel. She said, you know what? It ain't either. She said, this is the enemy trying to. She said, baby, I don't understand it, but there are just timings of God, and you got to let this go, let it go now, and let it happen, and just be done with it. That's just hardcore, but that's just the way it is. And she said, you're just going to grab yourself and put on your big boy panties and just, just <laughs> do it. I'm telling you because this thing will har harass you, harass you, harass you. And it's going to make you mad over and over. I've been, you know what? I mean? You can be spiritual all you want. 
Are you listening? But she said, what did God say? I said, baby, he said, I mean, I bore witness, it's done. She said, then that's it, done. We, you cannot allow reason and condemnation. You didn't do it right. I know you do stupid things sometimes. Boy, we got a bunch of holy people in this room, I'm telling you. But I made mistakes. And I thought, man, and it was like, but see, when I got, you remember when David said in Psalm 71 or 73, one of those, when he got in, when he saw what was going on around him, he just said, it's almost been in vain that I've tried to walk right before you. But it says, until they got into, in what? Into the presence. Yeah. Then he said, then I saw their end. See, presence will straighten out many times. Because, see, you've got to discern spiritually. It just makes you, and, and, and the aggravation, the frustration, whatever it be, some people just hide away and, and internalize everything. And you think they're perfect. And all of a sudden, they got this festering going on inside of them. And it ain't nothing good for something to fester, is it? A sore or something? Uh-uh. That can cause infection, you know. I mean, and, 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 and it don't matter. You've got to let, and, and see, that peace came. And it was like, go back to. And I realized that we were heading back south of the border again in a very strong way. And we've always been done something, leadership, done things, whatever. We never stopped doing that. Because that's a major mandate we have. But I knew I saw that network coming back. And, I, and you got to remember, I'm, I didn't get a little mouthy. I mean, I, I, I have to repent a lot. I don't just say, Lord, I'm sorry, I repent because I'm working on it. Like Lisa, said, she said, I know one thing about my husband. He's in a constant change of repentance. You know what I mean? I mean I'm just there. <laughs> and so, you know, it's like, well, you know, you've been, I've had, you know, what, what's taken so long with all this thing? If we're supposed to, you know what he said this? He said, it's not so much about you all the time. It's about others. That's right. He said, you got to remember, he said, just like he did with Peter and Cornelius. He put Cornelius on top of a house. I mean, Peter, uh, help me, John, on top of a house and gave him a dream. And here's Cornelius all the time giving alms and sacrifice and impressing something in the spirit. And God's, because he's a Gentile, he's not a Jew. But God had to have somebody in that realm to act. Because yeah. they were God is sovereign, he could do it. No, he had to have somebody to act in faith and push that realm. And he found a man named Cornelius is willing to do it. Then he went to a Jew named Peter. And said, hey, you're fixing to do something for me. Nobody else has the integrity to do. And, he, and, and, and you understand. And he takes it up and says, God, I'm, I'm, I'm Jewish. I would never touch that. And he said, don't you call unclean what I call clean. And like he said, you have no idea where, in other words, what I want to do with this in you. And I, you know, well, see, what got me free of what I was dealing with, because, man, I'd cry. I'd drive down the road crying, think, God, what, you know, because I saw so much happen there. And my heart's there. But Dr. Lee said, baby, listen to me. Shh, shh, listen to me. That's what she'll do me. Because I'd start talking. Shh, shh, listen. you got a soul tie there. And you love those people. How many times did I talk you out of moving there? A bunch. She said, why? Was it ever God's will? No. Why, though? Because she said you'd get down there and start operating and you, you, would get, you would see light into one place. And you know, if I could get that light, we can change. And she said, God, that's your prophetic. That's what you see. You see. But that, you're supposed to do something about it. And she said, it's hard for you sometimes by your nature and who you are not to want to go do something about it. Yeah. And that's where I come in and others come in, especially me. Ah. I thought I see that very clear, huh? And that's where I mean, I get that simple, okay. And she said, that's why you're thinking the way you're thinking. Okay, okay. So she said, it's not rocket science, it's just who you are. Okay, I see that. So she said, this is Gary, not God. Okay, because she said, I don't bear witness. Your board doesn't bear witness. No, I've talked to them about it. She goes, they're not seeing it. Okay, she said, this is you. Because of your nature to build, you, saw, you see things happening, and you know you can, you can square up on it. 
That's just the result of doing truth. That's the result of the word. That's the a, a result of obedience. It'll be somebody else's job to act on that. Some plant, some water, some harvest. Are you listening? But seeing this thing that we're heading towards south of the border gets my heart in a place to let go of what we did. And that's where that, now look at this one. Then he came to Peter, and this is what hit me. Peter said to him, Lord, are you to wash my feet? Verse 7. Because how many know Peter was having a hard time at that moment? He wouldn't get in it. You ain't washing my feet, man. There ain't, you know, I know who you are versus who I am. Now notice this right here. Jesus answered and said to him, he said, Peter, what I am doing, you don't understand right now. But what? You, but you will know after this. Y'all have Amplified back there? Hang on this. Can I read this in Amplified? Are y'all getting this or y'all just, everybody's kind of looking at me. But I mean, walking around the hotel, this junk, all right when I'm getting right here, just see, I want you to narrow it down to this right here. And I said, okay. Because he said, remember, and he said these words. He said, it's not about me, it's about them. And, and a lot of you are, have a lot of maturity because of what you've been taught in this place, what you walked with God. There's a lot of maturity in this house. This house is one of the most seasoned houses I know the, for the prophetic and hearing God. Now, and I'm all over the place in a lot of different churches and camps and denominations and stuff. Listen to this. Jesus said to him, you do not understand what I'm doing, but you will understand later on. That Greek word is the same word we just saw a while ago with Jesus when he said he knew what he was about to do. That's that first word, Peter, you don't understand or know right now. In other words, like this, he said, Peter, I've got something to give you from the Father above you don't even know about. I've got revelation heading into you right now that you don't see it. But you know what? If you'll stick around, you wouldn't what, know this. That, that Greek word is a different Greek word, no. It's the Greek word, gnosko. And I may not be saying that correctly, but bear with me. It means you'll get it. It'll be, you'll, you'll receive it or you'll get it over time. And that's exactly how I saw that transition. He knew within himself what he was about to do. What do you mean you knew? Well, you're son of God. Well, no, let's not go at it like that. I'm the son of God, but I'm first the son of man. There was a form of deity in me, but I was led by the Holy Spirit. I had to act out what you live and what you do. Okay, right? I had to grow in stature and wisdom with God and man. There was no form of deity in me besides, you understand, this in here. I had to live out. Okay, I get that. So therefore... Me knowing what to do is what my father said. I got the download, and I would act on what I saw. Amen. That's where that E-I-D-O, E-I-D-O, or however you say it in the Greek. Well, that's that same word right there. He said, Peter, this, this E-I-D-O in me is what I'm giving you. Ah, and I saw that. Got to remember, it's, remember what he said last night? Early this morning I was, when I was heading toward you in prayer, he said, he said you tell them it's not about me, it's about them. Can you have governance? Well, look at it this way. Does reason override you? Look at Peter. He said, put your nets out for a haul. But master, we've told all night. We're professional fishermen, and we caught nothing. But on the ground of your... Oh. Joshua, that wall. Hey, I have given this city into your hands, huh? Well, do you have enough spiritual integrity on the inside to walk out that divine instruction? It was not jo uh, Joshua's uh, 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 job or, or uh, responsibility to bring down the wall. It was his responsibility to obey the, 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 divine, the, the divine or set of divine instructions. See that? So a lot of times that's why we don't get done what we need to get done. You got to know your own heart. And when I saw this right there, it's like, Gary, if you're not getting it, if you'll just stay around, I'll get it to you. That's my job as your high priest. One of, the, my, greatest, one of my greatest assignments or responsibilities being your high priest. You talk to me, you, you come back at me about describing job descriptions sometimes in some situations. He said, I'm coming back at you. My major number one job description in heaven is to get you to become what you're supposed to become. That's, that's called high priest. 
So I'm telling you, I have the ability to get within you what you need to make this work. Can I get it in you? Uh huh. Now we just got Greek to prove it. There is a form of download or our, our spiritual understanding that comes from the Father above. That's above reason. Can you get that in you? It's your call. But the great, one of the greatest things that right now that has to happen in the church is understanding separation. Last verse is this world. If you feed on fox all the time, you're going to get fox. And I'm going to tell you something. As good as he may be, Sean Hannity, and, well, Bill O'Reilly's gone, isn't he? He's gone, isn't he? Yeah. Well, whoever's in there, who's ever in there? Let me tell you this. I was in a church, a certain place, and I heard a man quote Glenn Beck. Now, he quoted him like it was Scripture. And I thought, dude, he, the, the guy has some discernment. There's no doubt about it. But I'm going to tell you right now, he is not Jesus. Right. And our hope is not that guy. Our, our conservatism is not the saving grace of America. Amen. The saving grace of America is a church that hears God, that intercedes, that prays, and obeys the Bible. Amen. Now, I'm as most conservative guy you've ever met in your life. Are you listening? But that is not my God. And if you feed on that, that's what you'll reap. That's why you've got to learn separation and say, okay, what, how, what are you listening to? What are you, what are you putting your heart and your mind into? You've got to learn the quiet. You've got to learn peace. That's something pastor said to me yesterday. He said, that's my number one restraint is peace. It keeps me. And I'm working on it, as I told him. How many of you ever get in the grind sometimes on the inside? I love to see the way Karen Purcell smiles because I know she's been there and done that and got a T-shirt. But she also has got great faith because she's overcome in that area. Because I got will, and she's got will to go change something. You know, how many, how many ever mouth off? Any of you ever mouth off? Any of you ever got that syndrome to mouth off? Man. You know, when you get tired of, you ever get tired of things? You want to go make it happen? You know what I'm saying? I'm just being honest. And you get tired of being patient, faith in patience you want her to promise? I got, I got the faith part, I'm tired of the patient part, and you're not moving quick enough? And you know, you know, and one day I was, I was, I was cleaning Lee's horse stalls. And I was over, of course, you know, if it's hot, I'm by myself. If it's cool, she's there. And it was one of them moments, it was, you were, it was hot. It was hot in that stall. And I was sitting there, and it was like, you know, and I, and I just mailed off. Because, I, I, I mean, we're, we're standing. And I'm not seeing light, and I'm thinking, you know what? And I told him this. I said, I just mailed off, and I said, you know, there, you did say in Romans chapter 12, there is the good and the acceptable and the perfect will. I said, I'm about ready for the good. Right. I just mailed that off. And none of you are, are dumb enough to do that, but I am. Because I just get fed up with it. And I just went right back at him, and I said, you know, I don't, I don't know about you, but I, 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 I got a lot of scripture. I can come back at you. You told us to let us reason together. I'm reasoning. Right. I'm fed up with it. Yes. I'm sick of your lack of whatever. Because I know what you said. Right. You ever been there done that? You ever got aggravated? See, a lot of you just don't say it. You think it, but you don't say it. I say it. You might as well go back at him because he knows what you're thinking. Like he told, I, I, this is revelation. He said, listen, when you, it's like, Gary, when you repent, it's not when I knew about it. It's when you got rid of it. When you, you know, that's why I just go right there, dumb, dumb, found out, dumb. God, forgive me. 
I'm an idiot. I know it. Forgive me. But you ever get agitated? Who don't? If you're trying to walk this covenant out and obey what he said, you, there are going to be frustrating moments in your life. I don't care how holy you are. I don't care if you do walk your pet duck on the water. I would be very impressed. Am I right, Pastor? But you might as well just go back at it. You ever had your kids just say stupid stuff when they're grown? Yeah, heck yeah, you better. If you got kids and you're part of them, they're adults. I'm thinking, I've looked at them, what got you so dumb? <laughs> you know, especially like 14, 15, I mean, where did you get this? Where did you get all smart all of a sudden? Where did you come into knowing all? I'm, I'm amazed. <laughs> what do you think God does with us? Did he drop you as a son or a daughter at that moment? <laughs> now, if it's in rebellion, he'll let you just do and you do. Yeah. But if you're just mouthing because you, did you not walk your kids through things? Sure. Now, if they got sassy or something, you just correct that. Hey, we won't have that tone in this house. Uh-huh. Now, wherever we got to go from here, you determine where we're going. But most of the time they pull back, right? Because when they were little, you got the wooden spoon and you tap that backside a couple, three times. You put their nose in the corner and says, you're not going to talk that way in this house. And if they learn then, especially they know now, hey, dad or mom mean it. They'll just take my, they'll take my video games, they'll take my cell phone, they'll take my life. They'll put me in the room with nothing. They hate that. So, you know, I don't have to beat you anymore. I'll just take your life. I'll take all your communications. I'll take your internet. I'll take whatever you, your video games. Right. You'll just sit in here and be bored. You'll, def- I'll re- I'll, you'll, you'll learn to redefine bored <laughs> when we're through with all this. You understand? Yeah. Well, I mean, but, other, but don't you think God's the same way? You, you're patient. You walk it out with him. You, you role play with Hey, this is what's real. Thank God. Listen, he will get in the driver's seat with you. No matter what you think it has happened or no matter what you think you are. Yeah. I'll tell Lee, I feel like I got a Yosemite Sam coming on. She said, just hold it, baby, just hold it. <laughs> blitten, blitten, blitten. <laughs> I'm going to shoot me a rabbit. You know what I mean, Bugs Bunny, you know. In other words, you just go, you ever want to just jump in place and scream, any of you? What is that, spirit or flesh? Flash, flash, you know. But how do you quiet that? But having more going in than you got going out. You understand what I'm saying? And it ain't a bunch of what, who did, just no good mess. It's God, it's spirit. You're feeding on the things you need to feed on. And your heart will get greater than your head. It's proven. Yeah. Scripture says it. And you will abide by what God said. Yeah. And so... What are some spiritual resolutions that some of you need to set today? And I just, I thought, God, what? And then after I got quiet, you know, when, you know, I mouth. And it was like, okay. And it was real quiet. And I was like, man. And it was in the middle of the morning, and it was two or three. I get up a lot, and I was praying. I was walking in my living room, praying in the Spirit. And he said, can I ask you a question? I said, what? I mean, it's so quiet in my house, peaceful. All the babies are asleep, even though they're grown. They're, they're all asleep. They're great. Lee's asleep. And I heard this voice. He said, do you really just want my good?
No. What do you want? You're perfect. I'm at work on that. But like I said, it's more than just you. And he said, you're at the outer edge of this storm, this challenge you're going through. But he said, what's bringing you out is not me, it's truth in you. And he said, when you walk through this, your heart will be fixed in this situation. And he said, if, if what we've talked about, this situation, certain things you're walking through have been things in the past that have beset you and not allowed me to manifest fully around you like I'd like to done. That's not good English, but you understand. So, yeah. So he said, there came a point I had to say until we go, until we deal with this. I said, why didn't, why didn't I deal with it in the past? Because he said, you're just wouldn't enough of me. Anymore. It's not about me, it's about you. I said, did I mess up? He said, no. He said, that's why you got 30 or 60 fold. You didn't get it, and you knew you didn't get it. But at that time, that's what you had to deal with, and it was more than you had. I said, man, I just, he said, it's not about screwing up. But see, I got peace, and see, I realized New Orleans was not about me. He said, you just obeyed me there. He said, that's not your major assignment. That's a assignment. There were things I wanted you to get into others. Yes. And he said, there are things that later on I will talk to you about. That happened there, but you're not ready right now. Because he said, all it's going to do is aggravate you and cause you agitation. I mean, I heard that. I was, on, I was fasting. And see, when I get real quiet in the night, that's a lot of times when I start that early 2 or 3 in the morning. I start when I start hearing. Because I get up at 4, 4.30. You know, I'm just, I'll go back to sleep for an hour or two and get back up. And that's when a lot of times I hear. And he said, I'll talk to you because there's some things I need to learn out of it. But it, don't, don't, it's not you. Yeah. Now, I realize I'm not stupid enough. That means we, did, you know, we didn't cross every T and hit, dot every I down there either. But you know what? That's what grace is about. Amen. You're not going to cross every T and dot every I. That's right. But grace will. Yeah. <laughs> so, baby, let me tell you something. It ain't all about you, what you think you is. It's what you are in him. Amen. Can you pull up Proverbs 11.6? And while he's doing that, pull it up in the message and pull it up just like in the New King James or one of those others you got. Proverbs, everybody stand to your feet with me. I live by this certain scripture right here. A very wise man wrote it. Proverbs 11.6. This keeps me right here. I go to it all the time. I, you know, amplify. But listen to this. The righteousness of the upright will deliver them. That's it right there. Pull that up in your uh, uh, message. Thank you. Good character is the best insurance. Crook, crooks get tapped. Trapped in their sinful lust. Right. Good character is the best insurance. Yes. Wow. Y'all get that? Yep. Yes. Woo! Now that dog will hunt, baby, right there. That's right. Now I don't know. I don't know which version you go at, Daz, but whatever do you go at it, get it. Mm-hmm. Amplifies rich in that. It talks about the righteousness. Man, folks, let me tell you something. Just doing it right will get you there. Like Peter. Peter, you're not getting this right now, but if you will let me work this in you, I'll get it across to you. Don't quit. Just stay with it. That's why faithfulness produces. And you needed to hear that right there. You needed to hear that. You deal with shame. Tries coming on you at times. And a very wise statement came from that guy right there. God, I don't think I'm doing enough for you. And it's like, no, you're doing too much. You're getting in my way. <laughs> you're the husband. Put your hands on her head or just anywhere, you know. Yeah, right there. 
Father, we both agree for peace and a change in restraints being gone now. There's a freedom in her. And Father, across this whole room right now, I bind condemnation. I bind the voice of the devil and that harassment. Father, I thank you. I thank you. Now I speak peace. We're just going to let this atmosphere work. You're going to get a, an under, a new definition or a new understanding of peace. You know, the smoke's going to clear for some of you right now. Restraints are coming off. Praise God. There's going to be some clarity you've not had. It's in the room right now. Just take it. Just take it. It's yours. There's a grace. There's an understanding. Mike hit it. Mike hit it right on. Right on on that mantle coming down. I mean, it's about physical healing, of course. Man, that's huge. But it's about clarity. It's, there's a mantle for clarity. There's a mantle for healing. There's, a man, there's just a mantle for God's goodness, His love. And some of you just need to understand that. He ain't ticked at you. He's not, he's not upset with you. And you need to get a, a new understanding in your heart what good enough is with him. That's all you need to live out of is that peace. You, you don't, listen, works won't get you nothing. Just press toward what's right. That's it right there. Good character is the best insurance. Just press toward what's right. It doesn't mean you're going to always get it right. But it's what your intentions are. It's what you plan to do on the inside and you act toward. And see, I had to get the point. Even if I did do something wrong in New Orleans, so what? God's big enough to bring it around. I was like, God, if I, I told him, if I did screw up, forgive me. Thank you, I told him, I just, I said, you, you, Lee said I didn't, and I trust her, but if I did, so be it. Done. Amen? Pastor, it's all yours. Go ahead and be seated for just uh, another moment. We're going to receive the love, uh, love offering for Gary and his ministry. And we just ask you to, to do one thing. Well, two things. Get in agreement with us that all that the Lord wants to come toward his ministry financially through us and through Madera will, be, will come forth in these services or any other way God wants to bring it in. Amen? And then just say, Lord, what's my part? What part do I play in this? Because this is more than just helping somebody have gas in their car and, and be able to go to the next ministry uh, venue it's a connection financially from your heart sowing into the anointing that's upon his life and when you connect that way you connect with the anointing you're not buying something but you are connecting with something from your heart amen and that's a whole long thing we don't have time to teach right now but i want to say this as they're passing out the offering envelopes lift your hand if you need one i want to say this about what gary taught today we are in a time right now where God is transitioning, shifting, however you want to say it. He's moving us into a different place spiritually. Everything, the reason there's so much chaos and craziness in the world right now is because everything is shifting in the world. And you've got the demonic forces fighting against the shift. You've got godly forces moving uh, the agenda of God ahead. And, uh, you know, like he was saying, we can get caught up in it in our mind and try to figure it out, uh, you know, and, and, you know, we can draw conclusions that there may be truth in that conclusion, but if it's not all truth, then you've got a problem. It's kind of like mixing oil and water together and then taking a drink. That's not going to work. Amen. 
And so it's a spiritual thing. It's something God is going to take us into. You notice Jesus, when he said to Peter, he said, what I'm doing right now, just, just go with me, Peter, just go with this. He said, what I'm doing right now, you don't understand now, but you will later. And so that's, that's where we're at right now. You have to just trust what the Holy Spirit's prompting you to do. It's a knowing more than it is an understanding many times. You know, really, our biggest uh, problem in life is not the devil and his attacks. He does do what he does. But it's our own mind trying to play God. And when we get to that place where we become the blank slate before him and we say, Lord, whatever you say, that's what I'm going to, with. Whatever that, that witness I have in my heart is, that's what I'm going to go with. And it may be a, a seemingly small step to you, but I'll tell you what, I've, I've seen one small step of faith and obedience to God produce tremendous results. Tremendous results. So hear what the Lord is saying today. And uh, you know that business of failure? We're all failures if we go from God's perfection standard. We haven't failed. We've just been human. To err is human. And so the enemy will try to drop that condemnation, guilt, you don't deserve it routine, or God can't use you, or God's mad at you, or whatever the lie of the day is. And uh, it's all nothing but lies. God's love for you is greater than your imperfections. Now, that doesn't mean that we can have a wrong heart, you know, and have some kind of, you know, wrong, rebellious attitude toward God. But at the same time, God is not going to get all upset. He doesn't fall off of his throne because you're a human. So you don't fall off of yours either, amen? Amen. And just let him work with you. Just open up your heart. He gave us a scripture a couple of years ago prophetically to this, ch this church, and he's confirmed it since then many times to me in different ways. And it's the one out of Ephesians 3. Is it Ephesians 3, 19 or 20? No, Ephesians 3, 20 says God is doing exceeding abundantly beyond what we can ask or even think it's like with Peter Peter you don't get it you don't know what I'm doing here and I can't explain it to you now because if I tried to you still wouldn't get it but go with me just go with me just have a heart to go with me and follow me and you will later on understand and see my wisdom and that's where we're at right now God's wanting to take you into some things that you might not even understand right now, but they're going to be good because he's a good God. Praise God. So, Father, we thank you for that today. We open our hearts to that, and we ask you, Holy Spirit, as we just come before you, Father, every day, just to open our heart and spend time with you. We thank you that you, you speak into our lives. You address the issues that you need to address. You show what you need to show. You uh, give hope, or maybe we've got hopelessness right now. Maybe we've come to the end of ourselves, and that's good because that's where you begin when we end. So we thank you, Father, for what you've shared with us today, what you'll share with us tonight as Brother Gary ministers tonight. And we receive it in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, thank you for this offering. We agree that all that you desire to come in financially through the church here and in other ways in this city, come to Gary and his minister. We thank you for the call that's on his life. And, Lord, I know that you are calling him back into Mexico. I know there's a, a strong and mighty work that you uh, want him to accomplish, and you want us to even partner with that, be a part of that, even go down there with him at times. So we thank you for that. We bless he and his family right now. And we ask you, Father God, just to open those doors supernaturally in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Praise God.